All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Bulletproof Dental Practice Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Peter Bolden. We have Craig Spodek, your other host on. Today, I'm super, super excited. We've been waiting like two months to do this, this uh, interview and talk with, with Dr. Christian Coachman. Um, if you guys don't know of Dr. Coachman, you might have been living under a rock here recently. He seems like you've been on every, every dental publication. And DSD, which is a company you founded, Digital Smile Design, is is definitely the buzzword in dentistry. I've had the the uh, the privilege of going through the DSD residency, and literally, you know, I, you know, I'm going to use the analogy with a fire hose. I literally sat there for four days in tents, and I felt like I was being sprayed with a fire hose. And and that's kind of the world I live in, Christian, which was which was really shocking to me. I thought a lot of these cosmetic courses, because that's all I pretty much done in my career. Yeah. A lot of those cosmetic courses I've come in and been like, yeah, yeah, this is good, and I've learned a couple pearls here and there. But it was, it was quite humbling, I'm going to tell you, to sit in your course for four days. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. I went, on a, I went on a tangent there. I want, to, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. You're, he, Christian's in Brazil right now, so we're doing this podcast. Craig, we just went international. Yeah. Boom, just like that. <laughs> With this podcast. Yeah, big time. The well, Bulletproof Dental well, Practice is now, now international. Hell yes. <laughs> Uh, anyway, buddy, Christian, welcome to this. Welcome. Welcome. to. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for agreeing to talk. Um, the purpose of today, like I kind of alluded to before we got online was I really want to bring awareness to our listeners of what you're doing in dentistry. Maybe talk about where you feel dentistry is going. Definitely talk about the digital workflow. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's super exciting. It's super exciting. Craig, you got anything to kind of add as, as, before we kind of jump into it? Well, as a person who um, knew very little about DSD, um, I actually met you, Christian, uh, before knowing much about DSD formally and uh, kind of dove in and got really curious. And for me, um, getting to know Kyle Stanley and some of the other guys and Paul and some of the other people that are involved in DSD and seeing what it can do for an emotional level. I mean, we all got into dentistry to change people's lives. At least the good guys are really focused on adding value to patients. And for me, it's the single greatest immediate value proposition that we could ever dream of for a patient. And as dentists, we almost have to uh, describe the Mercedes before they ever test drive it. And it it takes a very savvy and effective communicator to describe what a full-mouth reconstruction is going to be like for somebody. But with the tools available at DSD, that result is so immediate and emotional. I just absolutely love it. And I'm so freaking excited to have you here, Dr. Coachman. It's a true yeah. honor. And uh, I don't want to chew up too much bandwidth. We have to really get all the information from you. So thanks for giving us the time and welcome to the podcast. Thanks, guys. Uh, it, it is a pleasure. Um, I, I think uh, we, we don't know each other that much, but uh, you guys are people that I also admire, uh, mainly because... Uh, I like cool people. You guys are cool. You guys are, are smart. You guys are great dentists uh, doing great work over there. But uh, even though you, you guys are young, uh, we, we are all young still. Uh, you guys are, are also pioneers, you know, uh, as, I, as I learn from, from your practice, as I visit uh, the, way, the way your offices, uh, I, I think uh, you guys represent the best of what this new kind of dentist uh, will be and, and should be, you know, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, people that understand human behavior, uh, people, uh, doctors that understand how, how to treat people holistically, uh, go beyond teeth and gum, uh, mm-hmm. people that understand the business, you know, to survive on this amazingly competitive market uh, people that are looking for new solutions to provide quality, but create a, a nice business model out of it. You know, we all deserve to be happy and, and make money. Um, even though we know that we need to keep ethics and, and uh, human care at the highest level possible, possible uh, we need to learn much more than just doing dentistry. And you guys are great examples of that. So for me, it's an honor to participate here on, on this project. And uh, I really hope that uh, your project, this program, this show can grow and, and reach out to, to more and more young dentists. Mm-hmm. Uh, because as I mentioned uh, before, 
we are living in, in a crazy moment, uh, not only in dentistry, the whole world is upside down. Uh, uh, we don't know if uh, how much technology we need to, you know, from how much where technology will take us, if uh, North Korea will bomb us or if, uh, you know, what is going to happen in, in the Middle East or uh, uh, how this uh, new modern people behave, what people are looking for, uh, how the corporations are uh, aggressively taking over our business, uh, what is going to happen in five years, can we run dental offices being uh, the owner of our own office? Are we going to work for corporations in the future? Is it? Do we still have room for small boutique, high-end clinics, uh, or uh, you know, big big chains will take over uh, until a certain extent? I, I think there's so many questions that we need to answer, and if we are not careful, as I always say. Uh, being stuck in the comfort zone at this moment in time, it, it, it's like killing yourself. It, it's too dangerous. So we need to move. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Change is always a constant. Growth is optional. And of all those things you said, I mean, obviously, we don't have to worry too much if uh, Trump and uh, North Korea get into a heated argument. I think all this conversation is, is moot. But <laughs> outside of that, uh, human beings are so incredibly different right now. I think there's just been a worldwide cultural shift. You know, we talk about the millennials and they're the largest generation since the baby boomers, but they're so different from guys like our generation. You know, they really yes. care about the story behind everything they buy. Um, they don't want to, they can't just be advertised to, they can't just be marketed to. They're such a social and um, story dependent bunch. It's really interesting. It's a very, I'm excited. I, I, I'm excited about all this. I, I get, uh, I'm, I'm not feeling very threatened by corporate. I'm not feeling threatened by the changes. I'm, I'm feeling very in, 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 uh, passionate about it. To, to yeah. learn. This, is, this, is a great, this is a great moment for, for ambitious people, for aggressive people, for people that like moving, for people that are not afraid of changes, you know. Uh, it is dangerous for people that don't like all this stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's very, uh, the new generation, the millennials, uh, they're not looking uh, for uh, great products. They're looking for a great experience that goes beyond the product. Uh, um, for me, it's amazing to see how... Uh, Marketing and dentistry has changed the last past 30, 40, 50 years. I, I usually start telling the story of my grandfather. Yeah, even my great-grandfather, you know, as a dentist, they, they did almost nothing in terms of, of having to motivate people because mm -hmm. people are just coming, you know. Then changing into my father's uh, moment where competition started in a different way uh, until the moment that we enter internet and people started to search for information. And, and nowadays this whole thing that people are expecting an amazing uh, story of what they're going to experience. So uh, that's why the DSD program itself has been changing. You know, we, we've been adapting with these changes and, and nowadays the course, even the clinical part, it's all about storytelling, you know. This is probably uh, for the young people. If I would invest in and in, in, in train myself in something, I would train myself and become a better storyteller, because uh, that's the biggest uh, skill I think for for this new era. You know, if you're good, and this is not something new. You know, since four thousand years, uh, humans have been telling stories. We just need to practice it and. and and I see that dentists many times they're stuck in, in, inside four walls learning how to do uh, better preps and even better preps and then even better, better, better preps and then prepping even better and then buying an even bigger microscope to prep <laughs> and then polishing the prep even better and then flying all the way around the globe to make a course to prep even better. And, right. Uh, uh, that's, and they're missing some low, low, I always say that you're missing some low hanging fruit when either your presentation style was pretty terrible, your delivery was terrible, you left a lot, you know, like, it's not just about learning the clinical, right? Like you're saying, there's a point of diminishing returns. And I get it, clinical excellence, I get it. But there's such, there's such a missing link with how we are perceived 
when we go into the operatory. We may be the smartest people on the planet in terms of that dentistry when we go in there. But if the patient doesn't feel it, if the patient can't get that story, if they don't see what's in it for them, you lose. Yeah. It, 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 unfortunately, you know, uh, you know, for, the, for the people that love dental clinical work, and that's our life, you know, we grew up uh, being passionate about dentistry. And for 20, almost 20 years in my career, I was only caring about what we call dental porn, you know, uh, like the beautiful the clinical labs. features, yeah. the lab skills, the, the technique. Uh, <laughs> and that's amazing. And, and, and we sh- that. But for me, this is an obligation now. This is not a differentiation. Right. Uh, being good and doing decent dentistry is an obligation. Will not make you successful. Uh, first, because there's so many great clinicians, great technicians out there. Second, because uh, that's not the story that people want to hear. They, okay, I got it. You're good at what you do, uh, like thousands of others that in, in my same city here, I have dozens of them. Uh, why should I put my mouth in your hands? You know, what, what is the story? What is the excitement? What is the journey? Uh, how this is going to change my life? And and of course, this cannot be just words, you know, uh, people have to feel it. Uh, you need to be good with body language, with uh, ambience, at, you know, creating this uh, unconscious in, uh, message that will make people fall in love with you, with your team, with your office. Uh, you cannot just write, we are great, you know, people have to feel it, you know. That's you know, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned the story uh, telling because last night I started a book. Um, Peter and I got a video set from someone who's cr- critiquing our book because it's done and we want to have it just refined. And the book is a New York Times bestseller, uh, Donald Miller called, and the book's called Building a Story Brand. Have you, have you heard of it, Christian? Building a Story Brand. Yeah. The name is familiar. Yeah. Wonderful book. But he talks about it as an evolutionary um, adaptive trait that we have to conserve brain power. So the minute that a brand is telling you, oh, we're great, three generations, service with a smile, 30 minutes or less, your brain's like, turn this shit off because it's like, how does this affect me? Right. Yeah. Doesn't, you're not really telling me anything beneficial. But for millennia, the human brain has evolved to listen to a story. A story, I mean, that's how we can sit in a two-hour movie and completely disassociate from everything in the world and get entrenched. And even a, sometimes a pretty crappy movie too. But right. the human brain is wired over ancestral and generational DNA to have a story. Yeah, it's a magical recipe, you know, uh, learning basic uh, strategies of storytelling. It's, it's uh, an amazing strategy because humans are actually very predictable. Uh, uh, we think we are very different, but we are not, you know. Uh, our brain works very, in a very similar way, you know. That's why people that have these skills, they can even be dangerous because they can manipulate a lot of people. And, and we see that, uh, this a lot on, on, in politics, you know. Mm-hmm. If you know a little bit about how to tell stories and, and how to get into people's brain, you can make people do whatever you want, you know, yep. uh, and, and believe that uh, this guy can save you or be an amazing president or do whatever, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that is uh, the power. And now... Of course, that if we use the ethics, this is, uh, this is positive marketing. You know, this is modern marketing. Uh, until recently, people have been trying to make a lot of noise. That doesn't, you know, putting yourself as, as the hero, we usually say, it doesn't attract people. You know, right. the good message is when you put your, yeah, un, somehow your patient uh, feels like they are the heroes. You're just the guide. To the guide. That's that funny. That, that's what that's they talk about the story. Yeah, yeah, is the guide and the hero. And that's yeah, funny. The guide is the most important part. You have to show the problem. The problem is the portion of the story. That's the beginning of the problem. You have to show this is the problem and that the, 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 the guide is the hero. It's, it's first, so cool. first, first thing, you, you need to open the communication channels, you know, uh, to, to, you know, you try to imagine yourself meeting somebody at a bar, you know, and how can you sit beside somebody and have a drink with somebody and tell them they need a better smile, you know, and not sound arrogant or, or uh, unpolite. 
uh, how can you do that? Uh, the first thing is to open communication channels. And it, that the, the shortcut is, is getting into the emotional side of, of, of people's brain and connecting emotionally with people. Many people will give you credits uh, in, in minutes. Uh, you can make people like you and trust you if you know how to communicate properly, if you know what to say, uh, not what you want to say, but what the, the person wants to listen. And, and, and to do that, you need to read the person. You need to be able to read the person, connect emotionally, open communication channels, and then you can start to migrate from the rational side into the tech, uh, the emotional side into the technical side. Uh, and as you said, people need to understand once you jump into the technical side, the rational side, uh, I see many dentists immediately going for the solutions. We can fix you. We can do this. We can do that. And, and that's another problem, you know? So we see three stages, uh, gaining emotional credits, opening emotional channels. First, you cannot talk about dentistry before you get this permission, this emotional permission. Uh, once you get this emotional permission, people already like you. People already think you're a great dentist, even before you're talking about dentistry. Uh, and, and I'm sure that people, that very charismatic people like you guys, that, that's the shortcut. You know, when you have charisma, people like you and they say, oh, this guy's an amazing dentist. And then you ask them, how, how do you know? And they say, oh, you know what? I actually don't know. But I, <laughs> I don't know how. I, I just thought they were great dentists. They probably are. You know? Once you get this permission, then you, you get into a second journey and the second journey is the problem journey. You know, you need skills to talk about problems. You need to fill people with problems in a level that people will almost beg for solutions, you know, uh, and, and you need to start explaining. And nowadays with technology is amazing. You can really grab your patient's hand and jump into their mouth into a, like a sci-fi movie and <laughs> fly and travel through their teeth and the abrasion and the erosion and the crooked teeth and the recession and the, the infiltration and, and and make it visual and make it 3D and make it uh, almost like a movie. You know, that's why it's storytelling. We need to learn from Hollywood. And then you, you bring your hero through this journey of problems until the moment that the hero will ask the guide, please, can you help me? get through this you know and that's only then when you explain your treatment plan and uh, that's the solution yes if you trust me emotionally if you understand your problems and you really want to hear we have a solution for you and and, and that's when people value that's when people uh really give the credits that we dentists deserve to get you know yeah, you miss any one of those three stages, you completely fall flat. I think that's such a travesty in dentistry. There's probably wonderful clinicians who are better than all three of us combined, and they've gone out of business because they skip one of those important steps. They think, um, you know, yes. is, they do, I, I, I'm just going to get more technical. And, you know, obviously, sometimes when dentists get challenged, they go even more technical. They go with more uh, words, bimax protrusion and angle of, you know, an emergence profile and gingival zenith and patients are like glaze over. You, you know, I was just thinking of something as you were talking, Christian, and then finished. If, if every dentist had heard that last 10 minutes of what you just said, it categorically would change the industry because it, that's a paradigm shift way of thinking because, and I think it would change for the better if everyone would just kind of adopt that and like stop for a second, pump the brakes and just say, look, you know, and just change the delivery, change the approach, change the motives, change the value proposition to everybody. Um, it would categorically change it from like the people saying, oh, I hate going to the dentist and I hate dentist and dentist, you know, it would, it would categorically change the industry. And uh, man, I really wish I could put that in, on a megaphone for everyone to hear. My God, that kind or of- maybe, Or maybe right. not, just keep it for the few that- <laughs> <want to> see, <laughs> That's <you know>? true, <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, <laughs> Well, for those people who don't know about DSD, Digital Smile Design, Christian, um, can you kind of give us the genesis and then what it's about and, and I think the why as to, as to what it was created for and then talk about its workflow and then where you see dentistry kind of going, if you wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. um, I think that today, uh, today I, I, let me start with what DSD is today and then I can go back and kind of summarize uh, how we got here. Uh, Today, the DSD concept uh, 
is everything we believe we should understand to run a successful practice. Uh, so of course the clinical part is there, but is not the main thing. Uh, we, we consider that dentists coming to us are already doing good dentistry, clinically speaking. Uh, they're doing, you know, things pretty well. And then from there, we want to move forward into uh, running a successful business. Uh, so uh, from all, uh, all uh, and everything, of course, based on technology. So how, uh, how can we wow people from A to Z uh, with storytelling, technology, and digital dentistry, you know? Um, how can we uh, simplify things? How can we be more efficient? How can we reduce stress since our profession is so stressful? Reduce stress and generate more predictable outcomes. Um, so we go from uh, the main focus is what do we do to attract people to our office? And then once they step into our office, uh, what do we do on the first, second appointment? That's the core of the concept, you know. First, second appointment, what we mean is uh, from uh, the intake of information, the analysis, smile design, treatment planning, treatment presentation, case acceptance, uh, online marketing, uh, everything. And, and, and interdisciplinary treatment planning is a strong part since we believe that Beautiful stories uh, are interdisciplinary. Beautiful stories are facially driven. So all the modern principles of facially driven dentistry, interdisciplinary dentistry pay, play a big role because this beautiful story that we want to tell on the second appointment needs to be comprehensive and holistic. Uh, once the case is solved, we do have a part of the concept that is utilizing technology and digital dentistry to actually treat the patient. But that's the second part of, of the concept. Uh, now, DSD started 10 years ago with me working as a technician and, and wanting to help my clinicians, my clients, my dentists, to be more successful. Uh, so I wanted to play a special role in their business. I, I didn't want to just deliver crowns. Uh, I realized that I could be much more important and, and being more important means making more money as well. Uh, I wanted to share the profits with the doctor and to share profits with the doctor, I needed to deliver much more. So I started to help dentists <laughs> make more money. So that was my deal. I'm going to help you to make more money in different ways as a technician. And is, if my ideas work, you're going to share part of the profits with me. So you're going to make more money. I'm going to make more money. We, we create a team. So that was the initial idea. So I started to try to stop what I was doing and understand where were, were the pitfalls, the problems, where we were losing time and money, you know, time and money. Mm -hmm. So, oh, the face bowls were not working. Okay, we are losing time and money here because this face bowl is not helping us to achieve what we want. So what is the solution? Oh, so let's do the digital face bowl. Let's do the digital ruler. Let's do, you know, iPhone photography. Let's trace some lines. So, each one of these problems, I was trying to find the problems, not only clinical problems, but again, uh, business problems. What is making me have more stress and less profit, you know? And of course, many of the problems were clinical as well. Mm -hmm. So we were, uh, I was listing all these issues that I thought we could find better solutions and slowly creating a protocol to improve the process and be more predictable less stressful, more profitable. That's how the whole thing started. Yeah. And it's really the, the switch from going, you know, when I was in your course, I kept hearing, you know, going from analog dentistry into a digital workflow, right? And I think because of that, it's, it's, it's you know, we talked before I hit record about it, it being disruptive. I think when something goes almost completely digital, it becomes very disrupt disruptive and, and disruptive can be a good thing. You know, it, I think it has a negative connotation, but I think in, in the context of this, disruption is good because it's going to allow, like you said, less stress, more predictability, um, more value for the patient because they're going to be able to see the end result um, even before they kind of commit right? With some, with your smile design app and stuff like that and the simulations. And I think that just adds more value. Um, and, and 
I'm, I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm, I was a little bit intimidated. I'm not going to lie to you. And, and this is the wheelhouse that I live in, but I was a little intimidated when I started looking at, holy cow, here, here's what's coming down. You know, it's not a matter of if this starts happening, it's when. Yeah. And I was a little intimidated looking at all the, you know, the processes and all that I was going to have to kind of relearn. But, mm-hmm. um, but it, but it still builds on, a, on the sound principles of facial design and facial aesthetics. And, you know, it's, it's the same principles is just now in the digital workflow. Yeah. M- most of the print, many of the concepts we discuss, they, they, they can happen without digital, you know, uh, uh, philosophical ideas that we discuss of how to organize uh, uh, our, our office, you know, but of course there's no doubt that technology will make the magic happen. You know, uh, it is kind of scary because it's, it's a lot going on, you know, and, and if you are already doing, you're already running an office, you're already successful in your office, you, you don't want to lose what you already have. You want to change uh, in a smooth way. You don't want to kind of, 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 you cannot make less money next month than you're making this month. Right. Right implementing something new you know that's that's the big question you're How speaking to- exactly to i think of my fear is like it ain't broke why well, fix it right but but that's 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 a very stagnant status quo way of thinking and you can't just stay in the comfort zone you know because that's it's coming. the problem you know the problem well, the main problem here is you could have a great life as a dentist without implementing all the things that we've been talking about if it wasn't one thing, uh, corporate dentistry, you know, that's the problem. You know, if we could kick them out completely, we would be safe. But we cannot, you know, when you see Invisalign opening offices, mm-hmm. how can you tell an orthodontist that he's going to be in business in, in, in five or 10 years doing the same thing he always did? You know, if uh, nowadays there are companies shipping to people's home. Uh, aligner systems without a doctor, without even an appointment. Oh, but it doesn't work for everybody. Yes, nowadays it works only for 2% of the population. Yes, but things are growing like this. Uh, Everything we talk about uh, in terms of modern marketing, inbound marketing, storytelling, patient's experience, uh, understanding the millennials, uh, people behavior, how to create a brand, uh, uh, how to generate proper communication. It's new for us as doctors, as dentists, mm-hmm. for these business people, it's not new. Right. That's right. their expertise. You know, they are laughing. They're like, yeah. wow, we just found an amazing market. Healthcare yeah. and dentistry. This is amazing. These dentists don't know nothing about this, right. know nothing about business, know nothing about marketing, and they're having a great life. Yeah, let's yeah. bite a big piece of this pie because everybody wants a smile. It's yeah. an amazing product. Who doesn't want to smile with confidence? And and these doctors have been these dentists are were, were in a, in their bubble until today, and then suddenly we're not in a bubble anymore. Companies are buying more and more clinics. Uh, yeah. Dental clinic, dental companies that used to be. Uh, serving us and selling things to us will become our compar- competitors yeah. tomorrow. Insurance, insurance companies, Delta Dental, opening up their own offices. You know, yeah. I just want to say you, we can look at disruption and we can see how it's an opposing force against us. But things like DSD, things like Invisalign, these are good for our patients. It's good for our community. It's good for the people we serve. So, you know, dentistry needs these these forces because we've been able to protect it we've been able to say oh don't worry about you know root canal specialist i'll just do the root canal myself i took a one weekend course or or don't worry about invisalign it doesn't work let's put just put brackets on you but all this stuff that we're talking about maybe not the corporate stuff or maybe not smile direct the jury's still out on that one but (laughs) these are good things for our profession and good things for our communities that we serve. Dentistry is one of the most beautiful professions in that when we do it right, we help people. Many people have to make money by doing what's not right for people. So we're blessed that we have a profession that allows us to take care of people and be financially compensated. So Most of them, uh, usually, right? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> we do it right. 
We yeah. can agree upon principles. There's unethical people that come in every shape and profession. In every profession, yes. But if, if it's done right, we build long-term oh. relationships with people. You know, you're fourth generation, I'm third generation. I have people that have been going to Spodak dentists for 80 years. You probably, you know, I generate families that have been seeing us. And yeah. those relationships are one of the most special things that creates fulfillment for me. It is a magical profession for sure. That's why I'm so passionate. I don't, I don't see it a profession where the good professionals are so passionate about what they do as we see in dentistry. But again, uh, that catches attention from yep. corporate people. Yep. People say, wow, this is amazing. This is yep. just an amazing business, you know? These guys uh, want to work. Yes. They just don't know how to control their expenses exactly. and their marketing. Exactly. The, the, the kicker with that though, Christian, as you know, I mean, everyone knows as I'm stating the obvious is that that's not what we were. That's not what a lot of us went into school to be. You know, like I happen to like the the ground game and the business and looking at numbers and growing and marketing. But like a lot of dentists, we just wanted to be dentists, right? And so that's now they're problem. competing against. Now they're competing against straight up corporations that are straight up business numbers. You know, and it's like, damn, wasn't the dentistry already hard enough? And now we got to do all this shit. Like, come on. Yeah. So. It's tough, you know, and you're a one man team sometimes and it's, it's tough to, it's tough. The ground game gets harder and harder. So I, I, I think it's good. I agree with you. I think the disruption is good, Craig, about all these things coming in because it's going to up everybody's game in the end, the, the, the patient or the consumer will be the beneficiary, hopefully. Um, but it's also scary, you know, it's also I, scary. I honestly, I don't, I don't know if it's good or bad. It's just the way it is, you know, right. things change. Yeah. Who you cares? Know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't, we're not changing it. Oh, then is, Am is Amazon good or bad? You want to, well, go tell, ask them to kindly shut down for you. I think it's pretty good. If you bring me something in an hour, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you know, but you have all the pros and cons always with new things and new technology and new trends. Uh, but the thing is we can discuss if it's good or bad for the final outcome of the treatment from the clinical perspective. But business-wise, that doesn't really matter, unfortunately. You know, when, when we see, uh, you, know, uh, you know, McDonald's doesn't have a better burger, but in the 40s and 50s, they took over, you know, and, and what can you do? You can shout and say, no, my burger is better. Who cares? They right. took over, you know? So, Christian, so, give us the international yeah. view of this, too, because I, I like hearing – from a world perspective, because you travel obviously all over the world, training all the dentists. Do you see the pendulum, and, you know, the hot buzzword is, is corporate. So do you see the pendulum sh coming back? Like, or where do, you, where do you see all this going before there's settling? Um, does that make any sense? Uh, yeah, like, uh, maybe I understood. Um, <coughs> like everything, uh, uh, you know, we see cycles and we see extremes before mm -hmm. we balance. Um, and I think, uh, when it comes to, uh, it's like implants, you know, uh, when implants came, there was, a an extreme moment where people thought implants were perfect and everybody was placing implants. Then you had, uh, the disaster moment where all the disasters started to happen. And recently we have the other opposite where people are saying, so implants are not that good. We need to save teeth as much as we can. And pretty soon we're going to achieve a balance where people will start to make better decisions and, and uh, when extracting and when placing implants. Uh, uh, Business-wise and, and from the technological side, I think we are entering uh, the extreme world in dentistry of, of everything is about, we will enter this right ahead of us, I believe, where everybody's going to start talking about marketing and 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 business in dentistry too much. Uh, people will start forgetting about the, maybe even the patient and the clinical care and the, the beautiful details of what means beautiful dentistry. Um, it's a new trend to, to say I'm a dentist and I went to MBA or I, I'm studying uh, marketing and business. Uh, it's going to become very cool. Uh, people will go full power on that. Uh, and I don't know, in the future, I hope we will achieve a balance where dentists will come out of school with a certain level of knowledge on business and marketing, yes, but not forgetting that we are dentists first. 
And the only thing we need to understand is uh, how do we want to work, you know, in the future? Uh, do, do, do I really want to be the best and be an amazing professional? And people think that's great. That's not necessarily great. Uh, spending your life to be the best is not necessarily meaning that you're going to be happy. Right. Uh, so do you want to be the best, meaning you're going to kill yourself uh, 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 giving 100%, 110 for dentistry to be the best? Or are you going to work for a corporation? Easy. Be a decent dentist, very ethical, be an employee and have a great life. That's going to that's gonna happen as well. Because mm -hmm. companies will also achieve their balance because they're going to abuse dentists in the beginning of this process. They right. will abuse us. But it's going to achieve a moment that they, without us, they cannot survive. So they will start taking care of us as well. So in a few years, working for a corporation will probably be a good path as well. Or would, do you want to be a business dentist and, and, and uh, really understand because that's your passion, run a bigger office, have 10 dentists working for you, maybe two or three chains, make the right connections to be competitive with the big chains. That's the question. You know, how can you run your big office or run 10 offices, not 500 offices, but run five offices and be competitive and have differentials. So I see these three paths, you know, uh, uh, being an amazing artist, unique uh, dentist, and then you will, we will have space for that people. Small percentage, very small. Mm. Uh, working for a big corporation or having invest in business uh, and opening your little environment uh, and being competitive, you know, so. tell me, tell me how you feel about this. And, and this may be my arrogance that I've, I've had in future or I'm sorry, in previous episodes that I, I will say, I hope corporate opens up next to me because I will beat your ass right in the experience in the ground game. And, and that just may be me, me, you know, talking out of fear. Right. But, but I truly I, believe that I think there's still yeah. like corporate isn't this blanket. that's just going to run over everybody. Like it's still logistics and experience. It is now. It is now. That's true. Yeah. And I think if you pick option three <laughs> and option t three is probably what you and, and like opt, uh, was your option. I, I'm going to grow my office. I'm going to be competitive and uh, I, I'm going to own my business. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be, uh, I may not be the best dentist in my country. I may be, but I'm not going to work for uh, a corporation. Right. I'm going to be very good and, and I'm going to survive. And until today, um, this is uh, still uh, easier because corporations are still delivering lower quality, uh, cheesy <clears throat> marketing. Uh, but it gets to a moment where uh you know gucci can become a bigger chain you know right uh, and that's four seasons rich carlton yeah exactly. it's a matter of time i i agree yeah. i'm saying now yeah. so, right you know the rich carlton is, checks in 350 to 500 guests a day and they know you, each feel person's exclusive. Name. you still feel exclusive yeah you right. still, so that is the problem uh, uh when business people start to become more sophisticated when mm -hmm. business people start to hire better dentists because there's too many out there, uh, when they learn, for example, DSD and all the cool things, you know, when I talk to business people, everything makes sense to them Thank in you. five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. They say, I got it. I will implement this. Yeah. So I'm not saying that DSD is the solution, but when you start getting, you know, all these new concepts and making something extremely cool, you know, uh, uh, like a BMW uh, dealer shop, you know, uh, and and it's so cool to go there. Uh, it's different than Ferrari that is maybe one in the country. Okay, that's uh, corporations will not challenge the Ferrari store. So that's the question. You're going to have to become the Ferrari store because the BMW store that we are right now will not be sufficient because the corporations will be able to give something very similar. That's my vision, you know? And, and also I want to add to that because I'm a hundred percent in agreement with you. When you look, I was out with a very prominent dental um, private equity guy. He happens to be a good friend of mine. 
And he said, do you, real, do you know how many dermatologists there are in the country? And I'm like, I have no idea. And he's like, and he gave me some number that was basically a fifth of how many dentists there are. And the size of the dermatology business, how small it is in compared to the gross sales of dentistry. And he told me that of the dermatologists that are out there, and again, I'm making up numbers because I can't remember, but maybe 40 or 50% of their offices have been consolidated. Dentistry, corporate dentistry is in its extreme infancy. Of yep. the amount of dentists that are out there, it represents maybe only maybe 10% of practicing dentists are affiliated with corporations. So we're looking, oh yeah, Aspen, bring it on, Aspen. Cool smiles, come on, you're a joke. But there's a new corporation. They are, now they are. Yeah, they're coming on. There's a, there's a sophisticated operator. They're just getting their feet wet, you know, yeah. and once yeah. they really- and These brands, uh, I agree 100%, and the brands that we see that are big now will not be the brands in five years. They won't be. They won't be. Maybe, you know, maybe you guys will be part of the, what is the new brand in five years, you know? Yeah. Super smart, cool, great dentists as you guys will be involved on the projects that will really disrupt the market. Yeah, they talk to us already, Christian. They want to take us out to lunch. They know there's even conversations going on like, hey, I know you don't want to affiliate, but is there something we can do where we can corroborate? Smart guys. You got it. Smart guys. It's not about selling our job. Taking our models at scale, right? Because I guess just like Christian alluded to, it's the experience and the consolidation and the, you know, economies of scale that are attractive. So, um. And the dental wow. hospital too, the whole, like what we're, what I'm running with all the multidisciplinary specialists, it's becoming more and more a conversation piece for them to run dental that's, hospitals. That's a new trend that there's no way back. And it mainly in us is going to change everything. This model everything. that you have in us that you don't have it in Brazil and then you don't have it in Europe, this kind of referral specialist base, different offices. It doesn't make sense at all. You know, it works until today but it's going to change. And I know that specialists are kind of scary and they're aggressive <laughs> when you talk about it. I'm the super specialist and I survive from referrals from general practitioners from all over the, my area. I believe that these guys are in trouble because yeah, uh, I would agree. modern clients don't want to go around. And, and, and the concept of a holistic clinic is not a perio office. That's ridiculous. You know, it's not perio office. I have a holistic oral facial clinic and I have specialists working for me and my client comes in and he has everything under one roof. Uh, so this concept is very strong right in Brazil and you see some countries in Europe as well. So, uh, and, and I've talked yeah. about this a lot, Christian, you can, and well, well, I guess Craig and I've talked about this a lot is that I think that the, the Amazons and the Ubers and everything is become, is transforming our society and that's what people expect. And in dentistry, we have this weird, you know, Amazon brings you everything. Uber, you hit a button and a car comes to you. But in dentistry, you go to see a general dentist, then you need something else. Then you, then you drive across town, call a different person, make an appointment, go to that specialist, then, then go there and then come back. And like, that is not going to fly anymore. People are not going to tolerate that anymore. It's not a good model. It's yeah. good. That's, why, that's why Walmart sells milk. I mean, you know, you're already there. Yeah. You just buy the milk. No one wants, I mean, time is our most precious commodity. And, and it's true that the, the, the Uber shifted the consciousness of the, the modern Western individual. You know, when you, when you don't, you know, for the first couple of months, Uber came to my area. I remember thinking like, how am I going to get back? Or what am I going to, oh, what am I talking about? A freaking Uber. I'll tell my wife, go home with the kids. I'm going to stay here, have a drink with my friend. It just, yeah. sh- it shifts who you are. Amazon shifts everything. Yeah. So the yeah. fact is, is these, these things are not, these are disruptors, not only for their specific industries, but they disrupt the thought pattern of how the consumer interacts with all businesses. Yeah. So we, we these they're are not willing really to take, this is when, like you have, when you have, when you have Sarac or you have the ability to print crowns or whatever means you have in a day, argue whether it's good or bad digital dentistry. Once your friend had their crown done in a day and you had a temporary put on, they are pissed. Yeah. They're pissed yeah. at you. Why didn't you do that? I had a patient mad at me. I didn't recommend Lenap back in 2014. I said it got FDA approval in 16. They were mad. They're like, how did you make me go through recommended surgery when Lenap when La- was there? I'm like, well, listen, Joanne, there's stuff coming down the pike in 10 years that you're going to be even mad that I recommended Lenap because in 10 years, we're going to be able to like send a robot into your freaking mouth and do it for you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is exciting. And uh, I think that, you know, well, the new generation, the younger dentists, um, 
they're not going to be as scared as us. It's very mm. natural for them. You know, I think the people that really are in trouble are us, you know, <laughs> people that are already, you know, if you're a dentist in between 40 and 60, you're in trouble because you're not born on this n new environment with these new ideas. You still have to survive. You're going to have to be pro productive and profitable for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Yep. Um, and the new generation will come in five years completely adapted to this, these new ideas. And uh, uh, we will, maybe we're going to work for them in the near future. <laughs> if we don't change ourselves, we will be working for them. <laughs> Well, just take on younger millennial associates, have them buy in, and slowly over time, you will work for them. Yeah. So. Just be open. That's the, but that's the key. Be open. Yeah. And but one of the things we have to point out with the millennial generation is they, you know, our generation has this idea that anything's possible. We're hyper-capitalistic. We believe in scaling enterprises. By and large, our generation believes that. Millennials are really about working just to live. Yeah. You know, you know, they make a certain amount of money and, and that's, they're actually more actualized. They're going to be more fulfilled than we are. We chase material wealth only to find that we're not as satisfied and fulfilled. They've kind of figured it out that they're, they're more involved in, in causes and doing yeah. good. And so maybe they actually have it more right than we do. So yeah. I, I, de I definitely agree. They're less ambitious. What is great for the world. They're more balanced. They're more sharing. Uh, that's our hope. And I think that's going to be great. Uh, uh, that's why uh, they need us as well. And, and it's going to have a nice blend, you know. I uh, believe that. It's going to be a good blend of, 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 of us working with people 10, 15, 20 years younger than us. Um, uh, but, again, you, you, you have to be open. You have to be open yeah. to work with different people, uh, work with different ideas. The thing is, no, I run my office by myself. I've been in the business for... 15 years, I'm 20 years, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, that's the dangerous behavior. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Like, I'm, bu I'm good. I'm busy. I don't need to market. I don't need to change. I'm good. I'm busy. Yeah. Like that's a dangerous mentality, right? Well, there's, there's a saying that says everything happens slowly until it's sudden. Yeah. You, don't see <laughs> like, you know, my exactly. teeth shifted. They weren't like this six months ago. I'm like, no, they were. You just exactly. don't see subtle changes, but things are changing. And, and, and we have to, understand what I usually tell doctors, you know, if you're running a healthy, profitable practice, you need to make this practice, keep making this amount of money and, and actually make more money every month because everybody wants to make a little better, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and, and, and you want to make a little better every year, meaning that if you're going to work for the next 15 years, maybe you have to do better every year. And in 15 years, if you want to stop to work, you need to have a business that somehow you can transform into money that is your retirement, that you can live more 40 years or 30 years because we're going to live until 100. And, easy, and, yeah. And so that that is the math that we need to do. Christian, I, I, honestly, I didn't know we were, you know, I'm glad that this conversation evolved into what it did because I think it's it's timely for everyone to hear. Um, honestly, I, I wasn't expecting that because I wanted you to talk about um, – but I'm still blown away. I wanted you to talk about kind of your wheelhouse a little bit more because I think we need to know more about this, um, you know, which is, and I think the history books will prove the dental history books. That is that you were really the, the innovator that took the digital, you know, I think the, the there's going to be a fork in the road and right. And I think you're going to be on that fork that showed that like really propelled the digital workflow into what is going to become commonplace in, in five, 10 years without a doubt. So can you kind of walk through the process? Because um, I, yeah, I just think, and I don't think enough people know about what you're doing. Well, before, before you get onto that, Christian, sorry. I actually see it really all together. The technology without this portion of this program that we've done is completely useless because it's not the story. And in the shaping um, world that we face, this is, the, this is the context that this makes sense for. You know what I mean, Peter? Like, yes, absolutely. This is absolutely. the wheelhouse. Yes. Well, yeah, I, I, I should have chosen my words a little better. I was trying to be pithy with him. But 
you're you're right. It's super important, and it is his wheelhouse because that was the evolution of why DSD right. was probably created. I get right. that, but I'm I'm trying to get into the granular explanation of what DSD is, so that people yeah. are sitting there saying like, well, "What is this digital you're talking about?" Um, because it's really it's an eye opener. Like I said, I sat there for three days and was kind of like, "What the heck?" Um, um, well, four days, but I had to leave a day early. Um, but anyway, so. I think it's, it's um, uh, people need help to make that transition. And that's what uh, we are trying to do, you know. Um, even experienced, successful uh, office owners, uh, they need help to make this transition. The ones that, uh, first they need to be excited about doing this transition. And, mm -hmm. and that's beautiful. DSD app gave me the amazing opportunity to meet every week, every month, people like you guys, you know amazing dentist super excited with this new moment that we are entering um, so we realized that uh, uh, first we need uh, awareness so we need to bring to doctors what is coming what is available what is new what is possible so that's the first goal for us mm -hmm. through the ESD program then uh, we need to educate people about uh, these four moments. DSD is based on four moments, design, plan, sell, and perform. So trying to generate education on these four moments with this new technology. How can you make these four moments happen with technology? And then uh, after this uh, education, uh, we are building a series of, of uh, services, you know, uh, because when people come out of the program, they need, uh, maybe they need people from our team to go to their office, to train their staff, to train their front mm -hmm. desk, train their technician, uh, make some technological adaptations, uh, uh, create a, an IT based, uh, an IT, uh, uh, service that allows you to incorporate all of this. That's one of the main reasons why, uh, we partner up with, with Paul Vigario, you know, the, the, the one who introduced me to, to Greg uh, and Surf CT, and we became one thing uh, because uh, if you don't have the basics on the IT side, uh, the whole story it, it doesn't really happen. You know, it needs to happen like magic. We, we, the best example is Cirque du Soleil. So for us, first, second appointment needs to happen as Cirque du Soleil an amazing experience that behind the scenes that's this whole team and technology working but for the client he's looking and he's just like wow this is so seamless so smooth so beautiful so elegant so mm -hmm. precise so exciting uh, that i want to be here you know so uh, we need uh, we need support from IT. We need support from marketing. We need support on social media. We need support uh, uh, on the clinical side. We need support on the planning side. Uh, that's why we have the planning center, and now we have the DSD lab because um, companies didn't understand what we were doing. You know, uh, only now it's actually this year, last year, that companies realized what we were doing. You know the DSD for them was ah, it's just just some crazy guys from Brazil making some drawings over pictures. You know, they didn't realize what we were doing. They did. They do now. That's why Invisalign is working with us. That's why Strauman is working with us. That's why uh, you know uh, big companies. Henry Schein wants to work with us because now they realize uh, mm -hmm. what is happening exactly. You know, uh, we need dentists as dentists. We need help to make this transition. I'm not gonna buy software, I'm not gonna buy technology and do everything myself, you know, uh, unless I own 500 company, uh, 500 clinics, and then I became a corporation. Then I can have everything by my own, you know. If I only own my own office or I own three offices, even if it's a big uh, office, I cannot enter this world by myself. We need to learn the concept of outsourcing and teamwork and connectivity through technology and services. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to pick the partners. We need a new lab because 99.999% .999 of the labs out there, uh, even the ones that say I'm digital, don't really understand in depth what means being fully digital. They're learning. So we as dentists, we need modern labs modern labs are completely different you can work with an amazing ceramist that's something different and that's great 
and he can help you with dentistry the way we always did. Now, this new dentistry needs a completely different kind of lab support. Now, why should I change from my amazing ceramics to this new lab? Because, again, corporations will change, prices will drop, quality will raise, and it's up to you. You know, how can you convince somebody to have a veneer just because your technician is German and he does it handmade and it's five times more expensive, but the other one is as beautiful and it fits amazingly and it's perfectly representing the project because it's digital mm-hmm. and it's five times cheaper. We are done, you know, well, there's no way back. You got to ask Dr. Michael Appa how he does it then because that's the, he's the Ferrari. That's the Ferrari that you talk that you speak of. Handmade, exactly. non-digital, okay. and, beautiful and result. Great results, completely handmade, depending on him. Uh, Appa is a great friend and uh, I have great admiration for him. And he, he's at the peak. In terms yeah, of, he's a beast. Yeah. He's a beast. There's no... There's yeah. no. But he does work, I don't know, maybe 20 hours a day, you know? Yeah, he's, a, he's a dental unicorn for sure. I can't understand. I mean, I, I, I can't understand how he does it. God he's bless a him. He's what, a a, what a force of nature. He's yeah. a force of nature. And, yeah. that, and that's his model. Work, work, yeah. work. Work a lot. Uh, and uh, he cannot reproduce himself. He cannot multiply himself, you know? You don't uh, need to. He's like the LeBron James. He, LeBron <laughs> James doesn't need to duplicate himself. Exactly. No, that, and it works for him. So, uh, you know, that's, not, that's what I'm, I was saying. That's option number one. Once yeah. you graduate, I want to be like Appa. And that's, the, that's, you know, it's hard to have a family. It's hard to have a life. It's hard even to have friends. It's, it's, it's an option. And it works uh, if you're up to that, you know? Um, but even then, I can guarantee to you that some people will very, very soon start to achieve the same quality with the same marketing, with the same patient satisfaction, working much less yeah. and mm-hmm. being more happy. Uh, it's just about systems and, and, and understanding uh, how can you make it happen for you, you know, and not be a, a slave of your own profession. Yeah. It was interesting. He was, um, I, I know we're both, uh, Facebook friends with him, but I saw him posting in um, like the Mexican Riviera and he's like, listen, this is great, but I got to get back to work. <laughs> it's like, I can only drink champagne and, you know, hang on the beach for X amount of time. And I, I've got to give, you know, fulfill. Year. I be at the beach the whole year. I have no problem yeah, with that. Yeah, me too. I, <laughs> not me. So, so <laughs> I don't. Family and friends every yeah. single day, you know. Right, but it's. Enough to have that lifestyle that I want. Right, but it's, it's, very, it's very personal, the idea of what fulfills you. And, you know, I, I give, you know, a lot of people are pursuing a mission and thought that it'll fulfill them and it doesn't. So, I mean, if that's his happy spot, I mean, my work is my happy spot. I don't prep teeth, but I lead a team. So oftentimes I'll tell my wife, I'll come home for lunch. I'll be home at like 1 PM and I don't eat cause I know I'm going to come home and you know, shortly and I'll stay till five. I lose myself, but I lose myself in leading of a team and dealing with all my people. I have 50 people. I love all of them. I, I get to come in here and, you know, hug people and shake hands and meet people. So it's just about your own There's personal no fulfillment. Every, you need to find your, 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 your recipe. Right. Uh, um, you can't, we cannot judge and uh, we just want to be happy, you know. Right. You need to find, you need to define what means being happy for you, you know. Absolutely. Uh, Christian, where are you? Um, what are the upcoming things in the states that you've got going on for DSD um, for people? Because there's obviously going to generate a lot of interest in this um, from the pocket. What do you have upcoming? I know you. A lot of times, I went to the one in New York. Is it always in New York? So we actually have uh, uh, we have what we call a DSD residency. The mm-hmm. DSD residency is our main four day program. The the residency is actually divided in in. Uh, uh, in residency one, uh, two, three, and four. Uh, so residency one is the main one, and we do it in Sao Paulo, Madrid, and uh, New York. Okay. Uh, at and at, in Seattle as well at the Koi Center. So Koi Center once a year. Uh, New York we do twice a year. Madrid we do twice a year. We also do two extra 
one's in Madrid in Spanish, and Brazil we do twice a year in Portuguese. Um, that's the entrance. Before that, if people don't want to commit, you know, four days at first, what we have is what we call the DSD day. A DSD day is like a summary. It's like mm -hmm. a roadshow that we do, uh, summarizing the ideas uh, in a short program. Uh, we have fun with everybody there and people have uh, a taste of it uh, before they register into the big, big program if they want. So, um, of course, everything is on our website. We have the DSD residency uh, coming up in New York in uh, February 26, 20. Uh, 26 March 1st, February 26 to March 1st okay. uh, is the, the one. Residency two uh, and the residencies one, two, three, and four are not necessarily in order. People can do whatever they want. They don't need to follow uh, the numbers. Residency two is clinical and it's once a year only and it's in Brazil. And so it's the whole clinical team here for four days treating 10 patients from A to Z absolutely everything fully digital live mm. it's a it's a complete madness uh everything happens um you know people see the reality the pros and cons the limitations when things go wrong things go right uh how can you run uh your clinic in treating patients with real digital uh workflow workflow is that in portuguese too <laughs> that's in english that's in oh. english yeah. Nice. That's what I'm going to do. That, that's happening in, uh, in three weeks, I believe. Here oh. in some, it's and once how, a often, year. how often is that done um, a year? Once a year. Once a year? Once a year. Okay. Uh, in our uh, clinic in Sao Paulo with the full team from orthognatic, orthodontic, superior, full mouth rehabilitation, all on four, um, veneers, cosmetics, uh, composite, uh, worn dentition cases, uh, pink restorations, soft tissue defects. We, we, we perform average 10 patients with 15 different clinical situations uh, and everything needs to be fully digitally documented, digitally planned, uh, digitally performed from the lab perspective and the clinical perspective. So it's the, what we have right now available, you know, uh, people come from all over the world. That's awesome. How long is that Christian? Four days. Four days. Okay. Four days. Holy cow, man, you've, you've given us enough of your time and I, I am, am truly uh, honored to be able to sit here and, and, and talk with you about this stuff. Um, truly say that. And you're one of my dental idols and uh, I think you're doing, you're doing massive, you. massive moves for the industry, man. And, and, the, and history is going to prove that you, that yeah you're just you're you're a legend for sure already in the making so hopefully we're moving on the right direction but uh yeah admiration is mutual with you guys. thank you buddy thank you craig anything else in closing we'll let christian start his day no or really appreciate your generous time with us and uh just appreciate who you are not only what you do but how you how you support dentistry and all the people in it and how you're um, your energy around the people that are trying to get better you embrace them and guide people and uh uh, I'm grateful for you and to call you my friend. Thank you. It, it, it's really great to be with you guys and to have you guys as friends as well. I hope we can meet in person soon. Yeah, uh, that's right. I'm going to be in New, in New York for 40 days uh, from wow. February to March. Uh, we'll be there. Hopefully you guys can, can, can show up. We can go out with Paul as well. Yeah, uh, we'll do it. Have some yeah. fun. Let's organize that. You know, I just right. don't want to go to that duck place. that's like a thousand dollars or whatever they were talking about when we had dinner. Oh <laughs> my god! You've been there? <laughs> no, no, no. We I just we heard about it when we, we ate dinner together. It it's the best place on earth. <laughs> cool. We'll go. We'll go then. We'll go. If it's that good, we'll go. It is. It is. And I and I need to go to Miami as well. I yeah. Miss anytime you're welcome here. And Atlanta, hey I don't know. You know, Peter, that Atlanta was my my second home, right? For, I, for five years. I was just my, reading that you were with uh, Goldstein, Garber, and Salama. Yeah, I lived in Atlanta for five years. Uh, I love Atlanta. It's my it's my hometown in the U.S. It's it, it's where I, you know, I have my friends there, and uh, I had what, a. What time period were you here? What time period yeah, were you? Two thousand and four, two thousand and nine. 
No kidding. Yeah, that's yeah. I got out of school in 2002, and I've been here ever back in here ever since. So that's you worked with um, with uh, Pinkus. Pinkus, right? Yeah, Pinkus Adar. Pinkus was a great friend. Uh, he was the the main ceramist there when I arrived, uh, and mm -hmm. then he opened his own business, and I took right. his place. And he, he he's the best. Pinkus was he is. Yeah. So much. He helped I've so lectured much. with him. He <laughs> loves you. Uh, he, he has such adoration for you. Uh, he's a good dude. He's a really good dude, Pinkus. I love he's him. He's a special human being. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Cool. All right, guys. Stuff, guys. It was good stuff. Y'all have a great day. Christian, you thanks too. again for your time, pal. And we'll chat soon. See you guys soon. Okay. okay. Take care. Take, Take care. Great 2018. You yeah, too, man, man. For you sure. Too.